Chapter 2, Replacing My Cravings. I roll over and look at the clock. Another day. Beyond all reason and rationality, I slide out of bed and strip off everything that might weigh even the slightest ounce as I head to the scale. Maybe today will be the day the scale will be my friend and not reveal my secrets. Maybe somehow overnight, the molecular structure of my body shifted and today I will magically weigh less. But no, I yank out my ponytail holder. Hey, it's got to weigh something and decide to try again. But the scale doesn't change its mind the second time. It is not my friend this day. Vowing to do better, eat healthier, and make good choices, I head to the kitchen only to have my resolve melt like the icing on the cinnamon rolls my daughter just pulled from the oven. Yum. Oh, who cares what the scale says when this roll speaks such love and deliciousness? Two and a half cinnamon rolls later, I decide tomorrow will be a much better day to keep my promises to eat healthier. And since this is my last day to eat what I want, I better live it up. Another cinnamon roll, please. The next morning, I turn over and look at the clock. Another day. Beyond all reason and rationality, I slide out of bed and strip off everything that might weigh even the slightest ounce as I head to the scale. Maybe today will be the day. But once again, it isn't. I yank out my ponytail holder and try again. But no. Vowing to do better, eat healthier, and make good choices, I head into my day, only to find myself making more excuses, rationalizations, and promises for later. Always later. And the cycle I've come to hate and feel powerless to stop continues. Who could I talk to about this? If I admit my struggle to my friends, they might try to hold me accountable the next time we go out. And what if I'm not in the mood to be questioned about my nachos con queso with extra sour cream? I'll just tell them I'll be starting on Monday, and they'll be fine with it. They don't think I need to make changes. But I did need to make changes. I knew it. Because this wasn't really about the scale. It was about this battle that raged in my heart. I thought about, craved, and arranged my life too much around food. So much so, I knew it was something God was challenging me to surrender to his control. Really surrender. To the point where I'd make radical changes for the sake of my spiritual health, perhaps even more than my physical health. Part of my surrender was asking myself a really raw question. May I ask you this same raw question? Is it possible we love and rely on food more than we love and rely on God? Now, before you quit reading this book, hear me out. The question is crucial. I had to see the purpose of my struggle as something more than wearing smaller sizes and getting compliments from others. It had to be about something more than just me. I had to get honest enough to admit I relied on food more than I relied on God. Food was my comfort, my reward, my joy. Food was what I turned to in times of stress, sadness, and even in times of happiness. I felt stupid admitting that. I felt like such a spiritual failure. I told a few people about it, and most seemed supportive. But one well-meaning woman quipped what others would echo in the months that followed. You're making this diet thing a spiritual journey? Does God really care about our food? Yes, I think he does. God never intended for us to want anything more than we want him. Just the slightest glimpse into his word proves that. Look at what the Bible says when God's chosen people, the Israelites, wanted food more than they wanted God. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. Psalm 78, verse 18. Yikes. And what became of them? They never reached the promised land. These people wandered in the desert for 40 years, and no one but Joshua and Caleb, the next generation leaders, was allowed to enter the land flowing with milk and honey. I don't know about you, but I don't want to wander about in a desert unable to enter into the abundant life God has for me 
because I willfully put him to the test over food. When I started, I knew this battle would be hard, but through it all, I determined to make God my focus. Each time I craved something I knew wasn't part of my plan, I used that craving as a prompt to pray. I craved a lot, so I found myself praying a lot. Don't rush past that last paragraph. I used my cravings for food as a prompting to pray. It was my way of tearing down the tower of impossibility before me and building something new. My tower of impossibility was food. Brick by brick, I imagined myself dismantling the food tower and using those same bricks to build a walkway of prayer, paving the way to victory. Did this simple visualization make it easier? Sometimes it did. Other times my cravings for unhealthy food made me cry, seriously cry. Sometimes I wound up on the floor in my closet, praying with tears running down my face. And I gave myself permission to cry, just like the psalmist. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. Psalm 5, verses 1 through 3. That is exactly what I did. God, I want a biscuit this morning. Instead, I'm eating poached eggs. I'm thankful for these eggs, but I'll be honest in saying my cravings for other things are hard to resist. But instead of wallowing in what I can't have, I'm making the choice to celebrate what I can have. God, it's 10 o'clock a.m. and I'm craving again. I want those snack crackers that are screaming my name. But instead of reaching for them, I'm praying. I'll be honest, I don't want to pray. I want those crackers. But I'll have a handful of almonds and brick by brick, prayer by prayer, lay a path for victory. God, it's lunchtime and all my friends are heading out for Mexican. I love Mexican. I could seriously justify a big bowl of chips and guacamole right now. But once again, I'm choosing to pray instead of getting stuck in my craving. Help me, God, to feel satisfied with healthier choices. And that's how my prayers continued throughout the day. Laying my requests before God and waiting in expectation. Then one morning, it finally happened. I got up, and for the first time in a long while, I felt incredibly empowered. I still did the same crazy routine with the scale, no clothes, no ponytail holder, but I only stepped on it once. The numbers hadn't changed yet, but my heart had. One day of victory tasted better than any of that food I'd given up ever could. I had waited in expectation, using prayer as my guide, I did it. I did it that day and the next, then the next. Why not shoot for four victorious days in a row and then maybe one more? I can't promise you there won't be any more tears and I can't promise the scale will magically drop as quickly as you wish it would, but it will be a start, a really good start. <laughs>